This Peterson clip is pretty horrific, but I think it's worth playing because okay. this this Miriam Grossman woman who was with him, who was a psychologist at UC, UCLA, is an absolute psychotic freak, and I think it would be worth it to um, push back on some of the things that she is saying because this is one of the most not only virulently transphobic and fear-mongering things I've ever seen, but it's also just one of the most cataclysmically stupid arguments I've ever heard from one of the from the from. And that's a lot coming from what we watch with Jordan Peterson uh, most weeks. <laughs> and, it, and, and wow, what a shock. Jordan Peterson brought on staff at the Daily Wire, who that employs Matt Walsh, number one transphobe in the country because he has no other talents. Um, and now Jordan Peterson at the Daily Wire, doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on transphobia. It's almost like it's not a coincidence, and it's actually probably a stated mission of the Daily Wire to, to, to perpetuate this shit. Yeah, it's almost <laughs> like they're not free thinkers, and they're looking at the graphs of engagement, which you can see on Media Matters, that right-wing sites are getting a huge boom from people paying attention uh, and clicking on their stuff because of transphobia. And it's probably like the same people over and over again stirring up hate, because I think a majority of Americans want trans people to be able to be at least left alone, but it's profitable for them. And that's the reasoning behind this. And I do, I do want to make clear also that what, like, um, I think I just saw a few IMs last time when we played that Matt Walsh debate clip. Um, I think it's fair for all of these to sort of come with a trigger warning for transphobia. Um, and I say that completely seriously. I'm not being facetious whatsoever. I mean, this is some really, really disgraceful and difficult stuff for me, a straight white, mm -hmm. straight cis white man to watch. So for anyone who is actually, you know, in one of these marginalized communities, I completely understand. But I think it's worth, you know, giving a trigger warning. But I also think it's really important that where we are, we really... Really, we push really back strongly push back against this shit because this is this is like almost violent yeah everyone is terribly concerned about the suicide rate among uh kids who are questioning or confused about their gender identity and of course we have to always be concerned one suicide is too many we're all on the same page about preventing suicide. Okay, but no one is talking about the fact that you know what? Some of the parents are suicidal. This whole thing mm -hmm. is yep. driving some of the parents to feeling suicidal. And I'm talking about parents who have gone through the most terrible things in their lives. And this issue, this particular or deal with their child, seeing their child slip away and become someone unrecognizable, both in terms of their personality and their uh, physical persona, and, and in, in terms of their future losses, will this child be totally estranged from the family? Is this child going to come visit me when I'm sick in the hospital? Uh, is this child, you know, going to come to their siblings' weddings? Well, I can barely imagine. Hey, newsflash, Miriam. Straight people can be pieces of shit and bad kids on their own. There doesn't, they don't need to change anything about their composition to be just fucking bad kids and bad and bad siblings. That's that is not a genetic thing. Some kids just grow up to be pieces of shit. Yeah. Or maybe, and this and this this might be a crazy thing to think. What if it's your fault? What well, if it's the parents' fault? We'll get to that in a second. But, okay, let's just acknowledge there was a bit of a cut there. Thank you, Bad Stats, for putting this yes, up. As always. Always great, great account. Great account. Follow Bad Stats. Yeah, f f wading through the muck here. But this is Peterson's reaction. Imagine anything worse than being in a situation where you're, you have a child who's being pressured by idiot ideologues and potentially your spouse as well to radically hmm. transform themselves in an extraordinarily destructive way um, in a manner that's going to echo down the decades, that's going to disrupt the entire family structure uh, permanently, and that's going to turn the person you love into something like a confused monstrosity, which I think is the most general outcome. That and that you are powerless and made powerless as well by the courts to do anything about it and also subject to the punishment of law if you dare to voice your anti-transition opinion that is I mean, that's okay. a pretty dismal Completely. corner of hell that okay
That is complete. Is that really the end of it, basically? No, 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 right. like that is completely counterfactual. There are 400 plus anti trans, anti gender affirming care bills, making it a felony in some instances in some states to provide gender affirming care to, tri- to kids. That is, there's actually zero, zero examples of what the intellectual Dr. Jordan Peterson there is saying about there any being some like criminalization of parents for not providing gender affirming care to their kids. In fact, it's the opposite. Parents are being are under threat right now for doing what their child says is right for them. This shit drives me insane because um, what I said before is like there are multiple there are many factors to the to where families fracture that have absolutely nothing to do with anyone's gender or sexuality um i don't know if miriam grossman is a parent but parents are sometimes really shitty to their yeah. kids. parents sometimes physically and emotionally and mentally abuse their children so maybe that's why they wouldn't want to go to a family wedding maybe that's why when they're sick they maybe wouldn't feel necessarily comfortable going to help them because maybe if they were in that situation their parent wouldn't support them either clearly because these two fucking people are saying that transitioning would lead them to be a monstrosity or be or lead them to essentially um completely alter how they are mentally and emotionally if i were that kid too if i were one of these people's children i wouldn't associate with them either and it wouldn't be because i was trans exactly here we go about it and also subject to the punishment of law if you dare to voice your anti-transition opinion i mean that's a pretty dismal corner of hell that okay Oh, okay. I thought you, yeah. First of all, as I said, there's no censorship. <laughs> in fact, don't say gay is the opposite. You're, you could get in trouble for saying there are trans people, for saying and being a teacher and saying, I have a husband when you're a male teacher. It's the exact opposite, but re- Republicans, conservatives are really good at that. Reframing the debate so that they're the victims and projecting. I mean, this is just like an, another case of projection. So what Miriam Grossman is saying here is that kids, if you're transitioning, you could cause your parents to kill themselves from the emotional distress. Think about me before you. Look what you are going to make me do if you are if you transition. And that's what it comes down to, right? Every single almost every pillar of conservative ideology in one way or another can be boiled down to look at what you made me do. And also narcissistic fears, which is exactly what this whole parental rights movement is. It is a fear that your child will not be the exact image of you in the way that you have uh, constructed it in your mind. How your child might have their own identity, might have their own views on the world, might think about racism, might think about uh, U.S. empire, might think about capitalism, might have views that are not entirely in line with your vision for them. And that is an anxiety that to some level every parent feels because you don't want your child to be led astray even in the best circumstances right but the you're you also want to allow your child to have their own identity in this instance no one's being led astray the child is just expressing who they are like when i say led astray it's you know like maybe uh, going down a, a wrong path where they end up with like, I don't know. Yeah, you know what, you guys know what I'm saying. This is not that, this is not that. This is the exact opposite of the other end of the spectrum. Appealing to a fundamentalist narcissism, which is one based in cultural norms being static and based in parents not respecting the agency of their children and like this threat if a trans child heard this first of all if you're trans and listening to this and you're a child you being yourself if your parent can't accept that that is not on them i'm not on you that is on them that is on them and so this fear mongering about your parents going to kill themselves Man, there's also no evidence for it. We know the suicide rates for, ch- for children who uh, are forced to suppress their gender identity, for children who are trans, for children who are a part of the LGBTQ community. We know that their homelessness rates are higher because of the narcissism of parents like this, pushing them onto the streets and them not having the ability to have shelter anymore. 
because their parents are so hateful and can't see themselves in the image of their child. There is data after data after data set that shows this. And the Facts Over Feelings Network, the Daily Wire, founded by Ben Shapiro. FOFN. <laughs> they, they, they don't like they, I mean like this is the most emotional 100%. emotional argument possible and even but the two doctors right, there the right. two psychiatrists like is Miriam Grossman is she under an investigation she should have her license stripped from her go ahead Bradley I'm gonna look it up now but this but this is this even if like uh, I'm not even saying this to like be like this isn't devil's advocate or anything like that I'm saying to, to debunk this a little bit more even if we would accept the premise that a parent would like suicidally ideate as a result of their kid transitioning to to cons to to if you accept that premise which i think is not even acceptable if you were to then conflate that motivation or or, or reasoning entirely to a child transitioning that is a i think completely reductive to a person's mental health and b assumes so much responsibility towards a child in regards to their parents having a mental illness like suicidal ideation is not just like oh i see something happening therefore i'm going to kill myself mm -hmm. it is not like oh i am responding to one method of stimulus one reaction to something that's going on around me and i'm going to commit suicide it is like for these two people who are supposedly steeped in in psychological training and psychological knowledge to be like that's what's going to make someone unilateral really ideate and ideate suicidally that that should be reason enough or grounds enough for them to not have their degrees or for them to not be able to call themselves doctors it's it's completely it's complete nonsense i'm not trained in psychology and i know that suicide is not that simple and mm -hmm. suicidally ideating is not that simple and to simplify it like that and to reduce it like that is on purpose to make these kids feel like shit